Hello and welcome to DAS Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly, and today I have to tell you how much I like being a DAS gamer in a modern time, because there's always these new devices that come out that can be used with old retro hardware. So when the Belgian company Certashop contacted me and asked if I'd like to test uh, a MIDI synthesizer uh, shaped like a Buran, I said, yes. Yes, please. What is Buran? Buran was a late Soviet space shuttle, a rather impressive piece of engineering. On 15th of November of 1988, it successfully performed its first and last automated launch to orbits around Earth, descent and landing. It was the first space shuttle to ever perform a completely unmanned flight with landing. And this MIDI module is a tribute to it. So the complete package arrives in several pieces for the 3D printed enclosure. And this PCB. And you also get four screws that are used to attach the PCB to the enclosure. Then the top part snaps on. And the final touch. And it's also LEGO brick compliant, so you can stick your favorite Space LEGO Man on top if you'd like. Your only sound output option are those two RCA jacks that look like thrusters of the shuttle. On the front of the unit you'll find a mini USB port that is used to power the device as well as transfer data. Connecting the unit to the USB port of a modern Windows machine will get it recognized as a MIDI device. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to switch MIDI output in modern versions of Windows, but there are third-party tools such as Coolsoft MIDI Mapper that I'm using here that get the job done. Just select Buran as your device and now you're ready to listen to your favorite MIDI files using your favorite player. And here are a few Windows games with media music. A Microsoft Plus Classic Space Cadet Pinball. Original Age of Empires.
the recent source port version of System Shock Enhanced from Night Dive Studios. And here is something else you can only do in a non-DOS system. ScumVM allows you to remap Roland MT32 music to general MIDI. Check out Boran's renditions of Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake in a classic adventure loom. You can also use this device with MIDI output of DOSBox, but I think what everyone wants to hear is what it sounds like in real DOS games on a real retro machine. There is a MIDI port on the front of the unit exactly for that. I find the port to be a little stiff. Of course you'll need an appropriate game port to MIDI cable, as well as a sound card that allows an external MPU-401 output. Let me switch my output to external MIDI in the sound card settings, and here we go.
Downloads for the device include these two programs. First, a preset editor, where you can adjust all the parameters to your liking. Note that the parameters on the right side can be reset by MIDI input, while the settings on the left side are constant. Just mark the settings you'd like to change, adjust the parameters, and save that preset as a file. Now let's move on to the loader program. Here you can upload your presets as well as other instrument banks. Buran is compatible with previous instrument banks from Serdaco, but it also had a very special 50 megabyte bank made just for it, and that is what you heard all throughout this video. While changing banks is easy, it's not fast. Uploading the 50 megabyte bank takes over 10 and a half minutes. Uploading the preset though only takes a second. Basically, every DOS game that targets a uh, sound canvas will sound great on this. This is essentially sound canvas replacement, but it's not cheap. The complete version with the PCB and the printed enclosure will run you about uh, 110 US dollars. So, who is it for? Well, obviously, it's for the Soviet space shuttle enthusiasts who also like to listen to media music. But all joking aside, if you are a retro enthusiast, uh, you know how hard it can be to find old authentic hardware and sometimes how costly that is. So this can be a more reasonably priced alternative. Uh, and although it's not cheap, uh, it's also not made by a big company. It's made by uh, a DOS enthusiast, uh, a hardware enthusiast. I like when people do stuff like that and I think it's important to support it. And of course, a lot of the appeal is also its a conversation piece factor, where some of your friends might ask you, what is it? Maybe they're not interested in MIDI models, but you can hit them with that piece of uh, USSR history. And this is it for today's episode of DOS Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly, keep playing them DOS games, and listen to MIDI music. Thank you for watching. And thank you again for watching this DOS Nostalgia video. And here is a list of all the awesome DOS enthusiasts from DOS Nostalgia Patreon. Subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos, and consider supporting DOS Nostalgia on Patreon to see more videos just like this one.